Hello friends, welcome back to Zombie Zoology. My name is Zombie Zebra and I am in Mexico. Now my parents are travel agents so I have done a fair amount of traveling in my life so I figured it was high time I share with you my best travel tips. This is tips for traveling with a chronic illness. probably the most important part. You need to remember that things you need at home, you're not going to magically stop needing because you go on vacation. If you look at the stereotypical vacation packing guides, they're probably going to look very different than what you actually need. So the first thing I highly recommend is that you bring your pillow of choice. If you have any sort of neck problems, the pillow that you use is extremely important. I am very attached to this pillow. It is a memory foam pillow. And that's kind of the most important part of packing, is you want to pack as though they're going to have nothing you need there. If you have pots, if you need to up your salt intake, you may want to bring a couple salt shakers full of salt. You can just put a piece of tape over the top so the salt doesn't get everywhere, but you might have a really hard time hunting down salt. I also recommend you bring things like heating pads and ice packs. If the ice packs make your bag too heavy, you can take a water bottle from the mini fridge and put it in the ice box or freezer. A frozen water bottle makes a pretty great ice pack in a pinch. You also want to make sure you bring any braces that you might need. I had spinal surgery two years ago and I have a neck brace from that and I need it maybe once every four months but I still bring it with me on vacations because you just never know and it's much easier to pack it and end up not needing it than to need it and not have it. That could take out whole days of your vacation if there's some sort of brace you didn't anticipate needing that you now need because getting things while you're abroad, much, much, much harder. I also would recommend that you put your prescriptions in your carry-on. Just in general, anything that is valuable you should carry with you because, you know, obviously you don't want to think about stuff getting stolen, but things getting stolen from checked bags is actually a huge issue. I will never check a camera, a laptop, anything like that. So along the same vein, I don't check my prescriptions, especially something that would be tempting to steal. So just good advice in general, don't put valuables or prescription medication in your checked bag. I travel with a med tray that looks like this. Um, I really like it. I was able to section out all of my meds in advance so that I wouldn't fall behind on my meds. Um, if you're going to do something like this with, um, with tops that kind of open pretty easily, you're going to want to put this in a Ziploc bag because in your luggage it may get opened, things may fall around, so even if all of your pills fall out, worst case scenario, it sucks because it's no longer divided by day, but at least you haven't lost any pills to the contents of your suitcase. Now if you do have pills loose like this, do try and make sure you also have the prescription bottles with you so that you, if you do run into any trouble, you have the prescription bottles to be like, no, this is legit, that kind of thing. But they really shouldn't give you much trouble. I've never had any trouble with it. So moving on from packing, let's get to the actual day of travel. If you are in an airport, use a wheelchair if you need it. There is an option you can say at the gate, we need wheelchair service, and they will send someone to go get you a wheelchair. You may have to wait a second if you haven't like set it up in advance, but if you call the airline and let them know ahead of time, a lot of times they can have a wheelchair waiting for you ready to go. Well, I, for several years, was too proud to ask for one, and then after my spinal surgery, I got to the point where I was like, if I'm going to travel, I have to use a wheelchair because it got to the point where by the time I would get through security, I was so worn out and beat up. I felt like I couldn't move and we hadn't even taken off yet. And I was already just miserable and that is no way to start a vacation. So if you are going to get hurt by trying to move through the airport on your own, do not be afraid to ask for a wheelchair because they do have people whose entire job it is, is to wheel people around in those wheelchairs. And it may be a little awkward to ask for, you may not feel comfortable with it, but I promise you will not regret it. You want to bring a pillow of some sort for the plane. Plane rides are very hard on my spine. I think both like taking off, I kind of feel this crushing and then just sitting up for that long. Airplane seats aren't the most supportive, so I bring as many pillows as I can to kind of pack around me so I can curl up and try and sleep through the whole thing. Now, once you get to the actual resort, please, please, please pace yourself. It is really tempting to say, well, this is how other people do vacations, and this is what other people enjoy and find relaxing. So this is what I need to do to find relaxing. Like one piece of advice I always heard is, 
you know, if you have to wake up early for a flight and you get on the flight and you get there and you're exhausted, don't sleep until that night because it'll throw off your sleep schedule. For someone with a chronic illness, that's really untrue and really bad advice. If you get somewhere and you're completely exhausted, listen to your body. Do not push yourself. Able-bodied people can afford to push themselves and push through to when they're able to sleep, but you need to give your body the best possible chance to enjoy the vacation. So if you get somewhere and you are immediately tired, go to sleep. Just let yourself sleep when you're tired. The whole point of a vacation is getting to do what you want when you want. So if your body's telling you to sleep, go to sleep. Something I do is I leave my windows open. That's where I'm getting such great lighting right now. And so doing this, I allow myself to sleep absolutely whenever. So if I'm tired enough to sleep when it's still light outside, I definitely need to sleep. And if I'm awake enough that you know, even when it's dark outside, I don't put lights on in my room if it's dark outside. Um, if it's, if I'm awake enough that even without lights on, I still want to be awake, then I'll get work done, I'll play on my computer, I'll watch TV, whatever. Um, but I have noticed that just allowing the sun to do its thing kind of gets my body in that sleep pattern a little easier. It's really hard to enjoy a vacation if you're in pain. So you need to give your body the best possible fighting chance to not be in pain. So we all know that with chronic illnesses, something you do one day can have drastic effects on the next days. So you really want to be kind to yourself, just like you would if you're at home. If you're somebody who's like me and doesn't really drink for health reasons, like I don't really drink because my hangovers get pretty severe and I get dehydrated pretty easily, and also just I tend to need to be aware of how I'm holding myself and how I'm moving, which I am less so when I drink, so I don't drink very often at home. But on vacation there's kind of this pressure to like have a party and be exciting. And drinking is fun for lots of people, and it's fun for me too, it's just the physical effects are not ideal. So, especially if you're staying at a place that is all-inclusive, it might be very tempting to be like, well, it's all-inclusive, like, I can drink as much as I want, like, I might as well drink, even though it's something I don't do for health reasons at home, I should just go ahead and do it, right? Uh, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. If it's something you don't do for health reasons, those health reasons aren't going to disappear now that you're on vacation. And even if you think, oh, well, drinking's fun, right? If it's something that causes you physical harm, it's probably not going to be very fun in a couple hours. Remember, you can still run out of spoons even on vacation. Honestly, vacation should be about recharging spoons, about making yourself as equipped as possible to be productive once you get back to your real life. You don't want to spend vacations pressuring yourself to have fun, then go do all these outlandish activities, then completely run out of spoons and come back to your room and crash and be miserable. That is not what vacations are about. So if you're not someone who's going to have the energy to go parasailing and swim with the dolphins, don't go parasailing and swim with the dolphins. Let people who want to do that, do that. If your idea of a vacation is sitting in your room and playing board games, do that. That sounds awesome. If you have brain fog like me, you might have a hard time keeping track of your key card. Now, a big rookie mistake, you cannot keep your key card in with your phone. I actually have a wallet case for my phone, so the first several times I came here, I just stuck my, my key card in my phone wallet, came back to my room, and couldn't get in because Putting your card next to your phone kind of demagnetizes it, or for whatever reason, I don't know the science behind it, but makes it so that it doesn't work anymore. So I had to go to the lobby, and get it replaced with a new one, etc., etc. One thing my family has done is we have we get lanyards that have you know the little clear pouch in them that you can put your key card in. So that's a great thing to either wear around your neck or attach to your pants. Um, that, so that you can keep your key card physically attached to you somehow because if you're like me If it's not attached to my phone or attached to me I'm gonna leave it laying somewhere and the last thing you want to do is leave your key card to your room laying somewhere So I would highly recommend bringing a lanyard putting your key card in that and wearing it around your neck So you don't lose it. It looks a little dorky, but you're on vacation. So it's totally okay I promise and if anyone makes fun of you for it I will personally come and beat them up as a zombie zebra guarantee and the last and most important piece of advice is bring lots of clothes options. If you're like me and have any sort of centralized sensitization, I just in general have bad sensory processing and it, it oh, there are lots of sensations I hate and one of them is just the feeling of sweat and clothes clinging to you because of sweat. It just, oh, I hate it. So I always have to bring lots of clothes because every time I come in from outside, I am drenched in sweat and I immediately want to shower and change. So the last thing you want to do is, you know, if you're going to be here for eight nights, only bring eight pairs of clothes 
and then end up after three or four days with all of your clothes slow soaked through with sweat. I also recommend that you do some research into the hotel you're visiting. Obviously if you are in a wheelchair or something you're probably pretty used to having to check if places are accessible but it's a very good idea to look at pictures of the resort, look at pictures of the rooms, figure out if you know they have chairs around that you can sit in, if there are well-supported backs on those chairs, just generally what the facilities look like. Do they have elevators? Because not everywhere here does. If it's not in America, they aren't necessarily going to have the ADA. They aren't going to have necessarily the accessibility you're used to. So you need to do research and make sure you're going somewhere that you will be able to access. This is all good advice, but above and beyond all else in your vacation, make sure to have fun. Oh, and uh, I am a travel agent's daughter, so I'd be remiss if I didn't say, you know, you should use a travel agent. They just take so much stress out of it because if you book through a website, no one's gonna be there if something goes wrong. There's no one, there's no person you can call if something goes wrong. If you book with a travel agent, you have someone who have helped you plan your vacation every step of the way. They know you, they know your needs and they can help you if something goes wrong. And also, if you talk to a, an agent and say, hey, here are my accessibility needs, they can help you narrow that down and make sure you end up somewhere that can meet your needs. So just booking through a travel agent, especially as someone who has any sort of special needs or accommodations, um, most travel agents do have like personal relationships with the hotel, so that is hugely helpful. I highly recommend it. Also, trip insurance is a great thing, especially if you have a chronic illness, I highly recommend getting some sort of cancel for any reason trip insurance because you never know if you're gonna have a bad flare, end up in the hospital, stuff like that. So trip insurance seems really silly to a lot of people, but honestly, it's an incredibly smart thing to do. I, I know lots of stories of people who it has saved lots of money because things come up, things happen, and it's always better to be safe than sorry. So keep yourself safe, have fun, and uh, use a travel agent. People say they're dying off, they're not. They're very important. Travel agents are great, and not just because they're my parents. I promise, they're actually great. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Travel Tips with Zombie Zebra on Zombie Zoology. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share with your friends. Share with the Spoonie you know going on vacation next. Again, thank you guys for watching. Love y'all so much, and until next time, hoard those spoons.